Everyone, today we're going to be talking about if Joe Milton has the strongest arm in college football. And we're going to start the video right now. This is the newest edition of the performance lab. Reach your individual goals. You don't want to just talk about straight line speed. We also want to talk about your ability to quit. We break down your video. Let's make you into the quarterback I know you can become. All right, so Joe Milton has a big hype train going into the season this year, and to me, for a lot of great reasons. I mean, he's a big dude, 6'5", 245 pounds. Most people that are talking about his arm strength, there's a lot of guys that have talked about how he has the strongest arm, not only in college football, but that they've just seen in general. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what he does from a mechanic perspective, get a little bit more in depth into that really differentiates him and some of the things that we see time and time again. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. One of the things that, that stands out, and I've seen this a lot more lately with the quarterbacks that are able to throw the ball uh, really far. We saw this with Josh Allen recently, and I know this isn't the best angle. I wish we could you know, make it so these guys weren't here, but we could see his foot is off the ground here. And there's a couple things that stand out from this, right? So when he's going and loading and has the foot off to the side like that, what it does is one, I mean, it helps you with creating that hip and shoulder disassociation, something that we've talked a lot about and something that is obviously important when it comes to being able to add a lot of velocity to the throw. But what, when you see this angle, what it also shows is that it allows you to really load into that back hip well. And I've seen quarterbacks recently really struggle with being able to load into that back hip because I think a lot of people are really in a hurry to get the ball out of their hand quickly. And for good reason, I make videos all the time that talk about the importance of release time. And it is important to be able to get the ball out of your hands quickly. But just because we do want to have a great release time doesn't mean we want to bypass some of these critical parts of being able to generate a lot of force within the throw because not only is the release time important also what's very important is the amount of velocity and force we have behind the ball so what we can see here is again a great load into that back leg we can also see that front shoulder really coming up very effectively there which allows him to then as he's coming through really get plenty of action within the wrist and within the arm to be coming upwards, right? So when you load, typically, okay, this is gonna be a little bit more of like a, a straight throw. You wanna be able to get the ball kind of straight back and, and straight up over the top. We don't wanna end up having too much lowering down action. But the thing is, and what lowering the ball does, we see Josh Allen do it. And here we see Joe Milton do it. And what it does is it makes it so it just increases the amount of action that you're able to go through within the arm. I mean, I even do it a little bit, right? I even drop that, that ball down a little bit more. Uh, something that I wanna be able to work on to be able to get the ball out of my hands a little bit quicker. But when you see guys like this and, and being able to, to generate more power, uh, I think it definitely helps me in being able to generate power because I have a little bit longer action when I'm doing that. So, you know, it's important to be able to recognize that this is something that a lot of guys do. They gotta bring, especially on those deep throws, you gotta bring the ball down a little bit more in order to make it so we get better time up with the rest of the throw. Because when you're adding more power, more distance to the ball, what ends up happening is you end up having to take a little bit longer step. You end up having to load into that back leg a little bit more. And so the more that we have to load, into our back leg and the more we kind of slow down all those movements we have to be able to kind of slow down the arm and we don't want to necessarily slow down the arm speed we really want to be able to maximize the amount of action that we're able to generate through the arm so instead of slowing down the arm as we're loading or something like that we just lower the ball down a little bit more uh, and, and really you can just think about lifting that front shoulder all those things will help you in being able to throw the deep ball a little bit more effective we can see as the ball is coming out of his hands He's coming a good amount across with that ball. And that really, to me, has a big impact on accuracy, right? The more that we can get the elbow to be more like this, a little bit more of like the traditional way of, of releasing the ball, you know, a little more straight up and down. But once we start getting into, you know, the 45 is really where that ends up being, closer to that 45 degree angle, then that ends up really adding a lot more opportunity to be inaccurate side to side. We've made videos about that in the past. So, you know, understanding the elbow position, the arm position, I think is important when it comes to really being able to add consistency and a lot of accuracies to the throw. And we see him not only missing the ball side to side, but we also see him missing the ball, um, you know, high sometimes. So 
When we go back to this one here on the left, let's take a look at how long it's taken to get the ball out of his hand. He starts to load at 8.0 and the ball ends up coming out of his hand at probably about 1.0, right? So another guy that's about that 0.3 range, right? And, and so what we wanna be able to understand is how does he get the ball out of his hand so quickly with a long release? And a lot of that has to do with how much effort does and how much extra action does he have with the ball back behind him right so we can see as he's loading he gets the ball back and is very quick to get that elbow all the way through so from this position it's all elbow driving this is where we see a lot of guys that are able to throw the ball really well and have a lot of comfortability with getting external rotation in the shoulder as they're going through the throw one of the things that stands out to me though is he's very rushed to get onto that front leg. We talk about that a lot. We don't want to be too rushed there uh, as we're getting our, our weight onto that front leg just because that ends up again making it so we have some tendencies of missing the ball low, missing the ball high. This is a deeper throw and you know from that last one he didn't necessarily have great footwork. The, the thing is though is you want to be able to understand like when you don't have when you have a good pocket you don't necessarily need to be doing a bunch of extra stuff you want to be able to really set yourself up to be able to again load in that back leg i think what stands out with him and also with josh allen also with patrick mahomes is just their ability to load in that back leg really quickly right they go from this position you know now they're ready to throw boom load in that back hip right and then they from that load in the back hip then it's really just open up those hips and drive the elbow through right and what i see is so much extra action with taking a big step or doing a bunch of extra action with that front leg right we want to be able to just load in that back hip get that front hip down or for that front foot down and then we're rotating within the the hips and driving that elbow through as best that we can i do think that there's some things that he could definitely clean up and and put a little bit more of a focus on the accuracy side of the game and you know being more consistent there but i mean he does a lot of great things when it comes to generating force and, and he can get away with a little bit more when it comes to generating force because he could just you know get that foot down and, and utilize his body to be able to generate a lot of force and he has great timing right he does a great timing of hip rotation front shoulder elbow okay this one he had a little bit more of a straight up elbow angle because he sees the pressure here so he, he shows that he can sh throw from a, a variety of different arm angles he can get that ball down quickly he can throw with pressure he could throw with somebody right on him and, and that's the thing i mean we talk about this too the mechanics that i go over are really based off of best case scenario right the, in the best situation that you could possibly be in how you're throwing the ball and being able to really maximize that but the reality the situation is we're gonna have a lot of different things going on. Here, you, you can't come straight down with the ball. You have to kind of release and kind of stop that arm and come across and still be able to do that effectively. Now, how does that happen? To me, that happens from repetition. That happens from consistency. That happens from discipline. That happens from really understanding how you're gonna be able to throw the ball. And even though you end up having these situations where you're restricted, you still want the best that you can be able to get that front foot down. You wanna be able to rotate. You wanna get that elbow through you want to have a good quality wrist flick yeah you're gonna to have to stop some of those motions some of those actions but you still want to be able to do that to the best of your ability in order to have the best results and again in order to have the consistent results so as always guys if you like the information go ahead and click that thumbs up down below subscribe to the channel if you have any questions comments or recommendations you can leave those down below i do think that joe milton has one of the strongest arms in college football, undoubtedly. And I would say probably the strongest arm just based off of the size and some of these throws that he's able to make. And I'm really excited to be able to see how Tennessee does this year and how well he's able to really thrive within this offense. I feel like him going to Tennessee was a great choice. And, you know, I think we're going to be able to see a lot of great things from this year, as long as he can be consistent, you know, as long as he can be consistently accurate and be able to really stretch the defense in a variety of ways, then I think there's a lot of great opportunity for him within the SEC and within that Tennessee offense. Again, thanks for watching. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about what we do from a mechanic perspective, you can check out the description down below. We put a big focus on better understanding the how behind behind throwing the football and get really specific in the biomechanics, right? I think a lot of coaches are out there really trying to understand how to be able to be a better quarterback, right? And really help quarterbacks thrive in that position. And I think that that is something that is essential when it comes to having success within a team, within a season, from a overall development standpoint with quarterbacks. But 
What we do is we put a big focus on the biomechanics and, and the how behind the throw. And, and while that should transfer over to making you be a better quarterback, we're really putting a huge focus on how do you throw the ball and how can we maximize your ability to do that at the highest level possible. And that's why we do these breakdowns is so you can really see and, and isolate and understand that everybody throws the ball differently and we want to be able to understand how to maximize your own throw to make it so you can really succeed at the highest level. So again, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, check out the description, and we'll talk to you soon.